Social media can be a trap, y'all. If you don't believe me, according to a survey by Kaplan Test Prep, 51% of students receive bad advice about admissions from social media. 51%, that's half. That's a lot. That's a big percentage of students. And the way I like in social media, because I think it's a great tool, we're going to talk about that tonight, right? In this video, we're going to talk about, we're going to get you guys' questions, right? Because every Tuesday we're live action, you guys can ask whatever questions you want. Um, we're live right now on YouTube, on Facebook. We've got Instagram going on right here. We're going to cut you guys off in a couple minutes, but come over to YouTube. Um, but we're going to talk about a couple things tonight. One, we're going to talk about how you can use the internet for good and help yourself. We're going to talk about things to look out for on the internet. And we're going to talk about how you can elevate yourself and really put yourself in a predicament in the best use case for social media and for the internet in terms of getting to your goal of getting to medical school, being a great student. Are we all ready for that? Are we excited for that? Uh, first, we're going to do the intro, and then we'll get right into it, y'all. But stop making excuses. Stop whining. Stop, right? Get at it. No excuses. Just dominate. Stuff. All right, we are back. Um, so we're talking about social media and the dangers of social media. Um, I took the time to write some stuff down so we can have notes. This is live action, y'all. This ain't no faking and baking. This is live action, live action today. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna talk about, guys, is th what is the internet? What is the earth? What is social media? And why is this such an important topic? I'll give you guys an analogy. I like analogies because we all, we all live in the real world, right? So the real world analogy, we can all see it clearly, right? So my real world analogy is simply this. How many of you guys like chips? Who likes chips? Let me turn some lighting on. So we can can y'all see me now? Am I in full full effect now? You can see me. Perfect. Uh, who likes chips? Okay, I see people saying yes. Chips. Yes to chips. Yes to chips. All right. Well, the internet is like the world's largest bag of chips. Oh my gosh! Incredible. Mo chips, mo better. But the problem <laughs> is in that bag there are three poisonous chips. Three, in this world's largest bag of chips, would you still reach into that bag and eat the chips? We all love chips. Chips are great, amazing. So salty, crispy, amazing. If I told you a bag of chips had three poison chips in them, would you reach in there and eat those chips? What's the answer? We're live action, guys. I'm in no rush. I plan to be here for an hour-ish, so let's talk about it. Gizly said, nah, I wouldn't eat them chips. Nah, I can't. I couldn't I couldn't reach in there. Josh Allen said, nah, I can't do that either, right? Obviously. It doesn't matter if the bag is the world's biggest bag of chips. If just three of them are poison, I can't take that risk because, right, there we go, fatal. It's too catastrophic. The result of getting one bad chip is too catastrophic. And that's the way you have to look at social media. In that it's very, it's a great resource, but the problem is, is there's so much out there and it becomes hard to decipher what's poison and what's not poison, but one bad poisonous track can lead you off track, whether it's because it's negativity and it makes you feel bad about yourself, right? We were talking and studying coaching tonight. We're talking about my say, let's get a better grade students. We did an hour and 45 minutes of coaching. And one of the things we talked about is the stigma around mental health. And this student was incorrectly thinking that if I have a learning disability, People are going to judge me. People are not going to let me into medical school. People are, are not going to allow me to be great if I let out that I have a, I have a disability. And I'm like, no, 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 Never be ashamed. Tell people I've got a disability. Get the accommodations you need because success is what really matters. But the problem is, is if you look out here, everybody's lives are perfect. Everyone's great students. Everyone's penmanship. Everyone got the calligraphy pens out, right? Right in their notes. We incorrectly assume that everybody out here is perfect, is thriving, is succeeding when they're not, and it makes us feel bad. So there's so much poison on the internet, we gotta be careful, we gotta look through it. So the very first thing we're gonna talk about is the power of social media. And there are three areas in which social media is very powerful, okay? The first, like I said, is information. When I was, back in my day, I'm gonna be old right now, back in my day, <laughs> there was literally no internet. At that time, Wikipedia was like social media. It was like Facebook was brand new and you could just barely access it. Like it's like the movie, what was that movie? The Facebook movie? I don't forget what it's called. But it was like that movie where you could only access your university. And so I was an ant eater at UC Irvine. Woo! And so I could only access the other ant eaters. And all of a sudden it's like, we're worldwide on Facebook, right? It was crazy. It's like, oh, this is such an upgrade from, you know, this is sophisticato compared to MySpace. 
um, and the, the crazy place that was. And now I think our internet has devolved back over to MySpace. It's very colorful, very vibrant, uh, not a whole lot of substance. But the internet now in 2023, we live in a modern world. So it's awesome because you guys have so much information at your fingertips. It's incredible. You can literally, Karen, what is up? Uh, you can literally find answers to almost anything on the internet. And now, right in the last couple of months, what's popping up? AI, which has made it even crazier. Right? I just saw a thing that said Quora. If you guys know what Quora is, like where you can ask questions and get answers. Quora even has an AI component where you can ask it and get instant amazing answers using AI technology. So it's, it's awesome. So we, there's tons of information out there on the internet, which is great because if you're willing to look, if you're willing to really search and take the time and dedicate yourself, you can find the answer you need somewhere amongst the interwebs. It will be out there. So that's awesome. The flip side of that coin, though, is that there's so much information. It's so easy now to access the internet that anybody could pop up and have a social media profile. Do you know guys how many fake social media profiles are? And especially in a, in a TikTok world, right? There's so much stuff out there uh, that it can get just crazy. And this is one of the issues uh, that we have that we're gonna talk about, right? But so it's misinformation and proper information. The second thing that I think social media actually is really good for is community. It's being able to find people who are like you, who either are where you are in your journey or are ahead of you in the journey and you can look to to be inspired by. Right? Is it nice to be able to see physicians of color? Is it nice to be able to see people who are from your area succeeding or doing what you want to do? Right? Is it people who have the same physical disability, uh, mental handicap you have? Is it great to see them succeeding? So you can connect with, you can find your group, your people, and you can feel connected. For me as a student, when I went to college, right, like I said, social media wasn't as, as strong and as prevalent. And so it literally felt like I was the only black pre-med in the planet. It was like me and there was like three other people at my school who were pre-med and were black. And it was like, it was just us. And it was like, okay, black student union, the four of us. And it's like, 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 it was literally just like the same group of people. So it felt very isolating. It felt, uh, you felt like you were the only one. And so you were alone. But now with the internet, you guys can go out and you can find your like community, right? My group, my cult of greatness, we connect. We're an online community. If you're on here right now, Right? You're an honorary member of this cult of greatness. Put a cult of greatness in a box right now if you're part of that cult of greatness. But it's we're, we're worldwide. Students from all over, but we come together and we're united by our want to be our greatest selves, to commit to becoming that and doing the work to become that greatest self. So it's awesome. So if you guys can leverage in it to find your community, find your people to put around you, to support you, it's awesome. Definitely use it for that. My favorite use for the internet is networking, networking. Because you instantly have access, yes, Shannon is definitely an honorary member of the Cult of Greatness. <laughs> As is Dre, Dre got to come with me. If you guys didn't see the pictures on my Instagram, it's pretty awesome. Uh, my son Dre, who's seven, got to come with me last week when I spoke uh, at a medical school. He got to come with me and sit through the whole two hour lecture and he loved it, he was like engaged, he was asking like, questions afterward he was like i learned about the brain dad blah blah, blah. it was so cool he was like i didn't realize your students were adults and i'm like because <laughs> he always sees them on zoom but like he sees their screens so it was kind of fun it was a cool moment but anyway so <laughs> one of the coolest things uh about the internet is networking and have people at your fingertips as young people you can create opportunities in your life by knowing people and by establishing not just knowing them but the way you really leverage networking is by having a relationship with them and so social media allows you to, with the click of a button, reach out to people who can help your career, who can mentor you, who can coach you, who can put you forward, who can create opportunity for your life. And so if you aren't using social media to network, you're slipping. And people used to be big on LinkedIn, but I'm actually down on LinkedIn. I don't advise you networking on LinkedIn because I get so much spam crap on LinkedIn, it's a joke. So what I actually advise you guys to do is to something like this. Many of the people who are out there, they have social media profiles, they have emails you can find on websites, reach out to them in some way that is not LinkedIn and just start a conversation. Let them know what your aspirations are and what you want from them. Don't try to like be coy. Hey, listen, I'm a pre-med student. You look awesome. I wanna be where you are. How can we know each other? How can you be part of my clique? How can I get you on board? Reach out to people and you'll be surprised. You get a lot of no's, but you'll get some yeses. And that's the beauty of the internet is it increases the pool of people you have access to. So it's not like, and again, I'll talk from a minority perspective as a minority, there's like one black professor on campus, <laughs> if that, and it's like everybody goes to them. It's like the problem in medical school admission. In medical school, 
there's like one black person who's diversity and everybody runs to them and blocks them. It's like, it's overwhelming. But now with the internet, that network is huge, 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 huge opportunities to connect and advance your career through networking. So those are three use cases for the internet. But now how do we sift through all this stuff on the internet? How do we see the bad and the good? So as we transition here, if you guys are with me right now, we are live action. Let me reset right now. We are live action. I'm Dr. Andre Pineset. I'm here as always to help you guys be more productive, be more positive. If you guys are enjoying this so far, if you guys like the path we're going down, if you guys like live action knowledge being given to you, take a second and like the video right now, guys. Let me know you guys are here with me to get at it. My Instagrammers, we're gonna leave you guys. Get over to uh, YouTube if you wanna get at us. We over here on YouTube, live action. I'm gonna end this. Perfect. Now less people over here on the real stuff. Exactly, like Julian just said, hit that like button, y'all. We here, we here, I budgeted a bunch of time. Yes, Hannah's new here, what up? Hope you come back. We are live action every Tuesday, guys. We're going to be here live action, 6 p.m. Every single Tuesday, giving you guys information, help you guys move forward in your journey. So now that we have this big bucket of information, this big bag of chips, how do we see which ones are poison? How can we decode where the poison is and where the good stuff is? The very first thing I need you guys to understand is how the internet works. And if you guys understand how the internet works, you'll understand internet user motivation, and you'll be able to sift through a lot of the bull and the fake that's out there. TikTok is terrible. TTT. TikTok is terrible. TTT. I say that not because TikTok isn't valuable in terms of stuff that's on there, but because TikTok has created a culture of trending. Right? I always used to be like on trend, like what's in fashion. I can remember as a kid, growing up, we didn't have all the most money. And so one of the ways my parents would save money was that I always had seasons old clothing. And you guys who aren't poor, you might not know what that is. Essentially, stuff used to trend, like fashion would trend and it'd be hot for like six months or a year. Like, oh snap, that's in. And I can remember vividly in fifth grade, in fourth grade, corduroys were in, they were trending. And it trended all year, everybody was rocking corduroy all year. And I begged my mom for corduroy, I didn't get no corduroy. I was wearing jeans, like a loser. Okay, then fifth grade starts and we go back back to school shopping. My mom surprises me with all this corduroy. But oh snap, y'all, corduroy is no longer trending. It had its year. And now we're going to back to denim and it was the carpenter pants. If you guys remember, it had like the extra pockets and like the things on it, that was in. But now I don't got that, I got corduroy because I'm about the corduroy and I gotta wear the corduroy out because I'm gonna go to four and we got it. So anyway, so trends used to be longer. But now, <laughs> Trends have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter, and TikTok has been one of the pushers of that trending culture, of that expedition of trending, right? You wanna go viral, so you gotta be on a trend immediately. And so trending became copycatting, right? It's TikTok started as a lip syncing app. It's not what talent do I have, but how can I imitate what other people are doing, what other talented people have done? It's a copycat thing. And much like the game of telephone, go back to a childhood reference, the internet, it has made the internet a place of copycats and counterfeiters where people were not penalized anymore. There's no such thing as plagiarism. It's just, I'm trying to be trending. It's, it's a sign of admiration. <laughs> I had someone who literally was taking my content, my videos, and was remixing them. And not even remixing them, they were literally just copying they were cutting a segment of my video, posting it on their, their TikTok, and they had like a hundred something thousand followers. And I'm like, you can't just take my videos. Oh, well, Dr. Pine said, I admire you. I look up to you, blah, blah, blah. Well, then wait a minute. Then why are you stealing my videos and not crediting me if you admire me so much? Oh, well, I didn't know I couldn't do that. You didn't know because you can put a TikTok area, you little young buck. That's plagiarism. That's stealing. That's taking what someone else has, has created and claiming it as your own and profiting off of it. And so if we understand that, and then we understand the motivation behind doing that, why would someone do that? Because they want sponsorships, because they want followers, because they want likes, because in this world, y'all, followers and likes is social equity. We feel important, we get that dopamine hit from having people like our posts and having big followings and so forth, and we're hoping one day to get affiliate deals where people are gonna give us free stuff because we have lots of followers. 
And so that's how the internet works now. And so if you understand that, you understand that it's essentially the internet is manipulation of getting you to follow and like and da 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 da, and it's copycat era, then we understand that we can now start to look for those things and look to go beyond them. So the way we do that, guys, is that we look at people's body of work. We want to say to ourselves, wait a minute, <clears throat> this person has lots of followers and likes, but what are they actually saying? Are they just dancing and pointing at random stuff? Are they just giving me beautiful quotes that they didn't create? Are they just regurgitating the same stuff I hear all the time? Active learning over passive learning. Oh, repetition, spaced. Oh, recall. Are they just saying in pre-med? Oh, you want to get good grades. Oh, you want to do research. Oh, you want to... Are they telling other people's stories? I kid you not, I just saw this. There's a, there's a page on Instagram. I hate this social profile. I hate it so much, it's ridiculous. And it, it, it's the exact example of the fraudulent internet. And I'm gonna call this person out because I think it's, it's important. On Instagram, there's a profile called Project Diversify Medicine. Project Diversify Medicine, something like that. And they literally, right before I got on here, they posted this and I'm just like, this is the exact example of what I'm talking about. It's perfect timing. They posted, they took someone posted on their Twitter that they got accepted to medical school. This profile took that quote pasted it on a fancy design and then pasted it to their feed like, oh, y'all, we out here winning. If you want to get into medical school, then sign up for my service. And people are on there commenting on the post like, this is amazing, blah, 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 blah. And it didn't even dawn on them that this person didn't get into medical school because of that profile. <gasps> what? That's weird. I didn't even think about that. I just assumed we can't assume on the internet. We gotta look critically at things. We gotta look through things, look at people's body of work. Does this make sense to everybody what I'm saying right now? It's very important. It's very easy to take credit for someone else's intellectual property, someone else's achievement, and claim it as your own. And then say, oh, well, I didn't say that that was me, that I did that. I was just saying, hey, look, this is great. Someone got into medical school. And hey, I help you get into medical school. So I'm, right, targeting you. I'm marketing to you without marketing to you. What? It is fraud, I think. But, you know, everybody's their own thing, right? But this is the example of the internet. So you want to look at someone's body of work and say, wait a minute. What is their actual body of work? What are they actually putting out? Are they putting out meaningful, original content? Or are they giving me regurge? If it's a regurge account that tells you that they don't have anything original to offer, they aren't an expert, they haven't spent time studying, learning, growing in an industry to have real expertise to give to you, right? The next thing you wanna look for, instead of follows, what I want you guys to look for, because a lot of people are looking for followers. I want you to look for people who are trying to lead, who actually have something to say and are, and are out there doing the work on the ground. So when we talk about these things, let's get, can we get, can we get more micro? I was just saying this on, on a study coaching today is that someone tried to say, someone tried to misquote me. And I was like, don't do that. Don't ever generalize. What's my favorite quote? I'm, in the introduction to my five pillars course, I say, or I have to disclaim this. I say, hey, this ain't no TikTok. This five pillars thing list is a beast. It's just the, this is the most involved and complex and detailed study program on the planet. And the reason it is, is because I learned from the greatest, from Walt Disney. I was at Disney this weekend. If you guys saw my Instagram, right? Walt Disney said, the magic man himself, right? The, the, the happiest place on earth. His quote is, there is no magic in magic. All the magic is in the details. And I love that quote because here you have this guy who creates mythical creatures and a fantasy land and all that kind of stuff. But he's like, no, no, no. If you want to be able to be successful and create things, it's no magic and magic. Ain't no sprinkle dust out here. It's details. It's execution. It's nuance. I am a nuanced, detailed individual. But on the internet, it's hard to be nuanced. It's hard to be detailed, right? Because what do you got? 15 second. 15 second. When you are evaluating the internet, if no one, if the, you've never seen them speak for longer than 15 seconds, if you've never heard their actual voice, if all you see is them pointing at stuff, they're not an expert. It's like West Wing, right? Who's, I don't know if you guys are, so, again, I'm old, 
back in my day, there was a show called West Wing. It was great. It was fantastic. Martin Sheen, it was great. It was about the president. And it was cool because this show basically was showing you how politics works and how it's like manipulated and all this kind of stuff. And in one of the parts, they had a presidential debate. And in the presidential debate and the prep for this, here you have this guy, it's President Bartlett is his name in the show. And he's a very, he's an intellectual guy. He's a professor. He's a doctorate, right? He's very intellectual. He's very, he's expert. But his, his po political handlers are like, hey, listen, yeah, you sound great and everything, but it's too detailed. We need a one-liner. We, we need the five words. We need something that's five words that can go to the top of a newspaper. It's a headline. And that is what our internet is, is that people have five great words. And they want to shout them so that way you'll share it and like it and you'll pass it around because they got five great words. But what he says in the debate to win the debate is a very dramatic moment. He says, okay, well, that's, that's the five-word answer that my team's been looking for. But I'll tell you this, competitor, if you can give me the next five words, I'll drop out of the presidential race right now. And it was such a power play. Like, okay, yeah, that sounded great, but what's the next five words? If you give me the next five words, I'll drop out. And this is the challenge I put forth to you guys to challenge people with. Yes, you sound great for 15 seconds, but uh, what is the next 15 seconds? Yes, active learning is important, but how do I actively learn? Okay, I tried that active learning strategy, but it didn't work. What's the next strategy in your bag? Can you troubleshoot? Because there is going to be trouble along the journey. If you're a pre-med, trying to go to medical school, y'all, that's big time. Big time. It's hard. It's difficult. Do you know how many people want to go to medical school? But how many actually do? The few, y'all. The few. It's hard. Do you think generalities and mythical thinking is going to get you to medical school? So you need to rely on people who can give you the next 15 seconds. So if you look at someone's catalog and it's all 15 seconds, it's all hum, gumdrops and, and fairies and dancing around, they're in their scrubs and oh snap, that's trash. What's the next 15 seconds? Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is, if someone is a medical student and they're trying to advise you about how to get into medical school, do not listen to them. As someone who's... I, I, I <laughs> I've spoken at two medical schools in the last two weeks. I'm going to speak at another medical school next week. It's I say it to their face. <laughs> I spoke to MS once two weeks ago. I spoke to MS two last week. I say you guys are the the least informed people on the planet. You're you got you guys get into medical school and you think you're supposed to know everything. You think you know everything because you this has been your whole goal for your whole life. You feel accomplished, but you're at the base. You're at the root. You're down at the bottom, y'all. Just because you got into medical school, just because someone got into medical school, <gasps> doesn't mean they can get you into medical school. And the practical equivalent of this, guys, is how many of you guys have ever had a professor who was super smart? I've been fortunate when I was at Stanford, we had multiple Nobel laureate lecturers, people who won a Nobel Prize come and lecture to us. And do you want to know across the board, all these Nobel laureates that came and gave lectures in medical school, do you know what the, across the board, I would say about the quality of their lecture? What would you guys guess? These are Nobel laureates. Oh my gosh, they know everything about chemistry. They know everything about biochemistry. They know everything about this cancer. What would I tell you about their lecture? Hannah said, I just got done doing that pilot scene in my acting class. Awesome, acting class. To be or not to be, right? What would I say about those lectures? Guys, we are live action. If you don't comment, I'm going to stand here and look at you because I'm giving up my Tuesday evening to be here with you guys live action. So give it back to me. Give me something so I can give you something. Don't make me feel like I'm alone. I'm out here in the wilderness and nobody with me. Be with me if you with me. If we with me, we with me, we with me, with me. Who is with me right now? Okay. They were the worst lecturers. Exactly. Thank you guys for answering. Just because they are smart, just because they have achieved something, doesn't mean they can help you achieve it. And it's a big, big thing. If someone is constantly touting what they have done, what their accomplishment is, if they're dancing in the, in the, in the operating room or in the hospital and blah, 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 because they're a doctor, that doesn't mean they can make you a doctor. 
So I want you to look around the corner and ask yourself, wait, what has this person accomplished or helped other people, excuse me, accomplish? Not what have they accomplished, what have they helped other people accomplish? How many people have they gotten into medical school? How many people have they assisted? How many people have they actually made a real world impact with? That is the question I wanna know. If you ask that question, then you start to really see who's got that expert advice. Because like we just said, getting into medical school requires expertise, requires nuance. So if they've helped people get into medical school at a, at a large scale, they're gonna be nuanced, they're gonna be experienced, they're gonna be seasoned, okay? The next thing, as we talk about interacting and impacting others, is I want you to look at, the internet is misleading. So there, if you guys go Google me, there are numerous threads on Reddit and on SDN and all these places. If you guys don't know, I'm banned for life on SDN, banned. But there are numerous forums and exchanges going on about me where people who are not in any of my courses, people who are not in my coaching, bash me and my programs. But if you ever see me out at an event and you ever see any of my students out anywhere, you will see that me and my students is like this. We as ones. I have students who have been with me for a decade, over a decade, working on this pre-med process, who are now in medical school, in residency, both. they all, like, I want you to look at people's record and see the students who rock with them, who really are with them, do they stay with them? Do they speak well about them to your face? Because anybody wants to get on wherever and just say whatever, but what are these people's students actually doing? It's a huge difference in what matters. The other thing I'll say is, and it's the reason that I've decided for this year, right, with, with all this AI coming up, there's a lot of fake content coming out here, a lot of fakers, whatever, I want you to look at and say to yourself, do these people, A, have long form content, but then also, can they go live action? And when they go live action, can they speak towards action? A lot of people go live just to show you their day. Study with me, do this with me, do this with me. I don't wanna do something with you. I want you to teach me something. I want you to make me better. I don't wanna spend hours with you to not get better. If someone is not teaching you, empowering you, enlightening you, what the flippers are we doing? Me watching you do laundry and be silly. How does that help me get to medical school? And this is the trap of social media is distraction. This is why metaverse, everyone laughs at this metaverse thing, right? And it's a big joke. But the reality is it's super smart. And right now we ain't quite ready for the metaverse. But you guys watch. Metaverse is about to pop off because people love to take a trip out of their life. Why? Life is hard. Success is hard. Being a pre-med, getting to medical school, it's hard. It takes work. There is failure. There is struggle. There is sacrifice. There is setbacks. There is embarrassment. There are all these things in your real life. But when you go to social media, when you go to what's going to be the metaverse and you got your VR goggles on, you're just there. It's all perfect. It's all beautiful curated content. I don't have to look at how difficult my life is because I'm living someone else's beautiful life. And that is the hole. That is the gap. We got to recognize that and say, no, I will not give over to myself into distraction, into being pushed into someone. I'm not going to watch and be a voyeur into someone else's life. Instead, I'm going to do the hard thing and I'm going to work on my life. I'm going to focus on the, as intently as you guys watch some of these feeds and you guys be scrolling. I want you to scroll through your own highlight reel, your own life that way, and look at, hey, how did I jack up today? How could I have been better today? How did I succeed today? How could I have been a better person today, a more caring person? How could I have done more today in my real life to put myself closer to that life I admire so much that I see on the internet? That is what I want you guys to do on this internet. Look for people who've got something to say, who can be live action with you and who can impart wisdom to you, right? When you put them on the spot, as we're gonna do here in a second, I'm gonna let you guys ask questions. Does that make sense to everybody? This is so important. We gotta get at this. Let me see what else I wrote here. Oh, this is the other thing. I'm gonna say one final thing and then we'll move along. <laughs> Let 
one of the most predatory and empty statements that someone can make to you is, is I was on the admissions committee and that's why you should listen to me. Why is that a misleading and an empty statement? Why do I poo poo on people who say, listen to me because I was on the admissions committee? Exactly. That's why Kylie is, who's Twitter knows it all, right? That's why people prefer to live vicariously through Kylie and Kim. You guys make Kylie this billionaire because you want to look at her pretty life. It's crazy. We're live action, y'all. If you were on here with me, if you're with me, if you rock with me, if you want to get to this question section, if you're having a good time, if you're going to be joining me every Tuesday, comment, let me know. Like this video right now, let me know. You're going to be here every Tuesday with us. You're going to, you're going to rock with us. You're going to be part of this cult of greatness. You're going to, you're going to achieve your greatness. People who are on the admissions committee, being on an admissions committee, if you're in medical school, is the easiest thing ever. They literally send an email out saying, hey guys, we need people to review these applications in the early phases. Will you be on the committee? Why? Because they need manpower to review applications. Not because that person has any special qualifications. When you're on the admissions committee, a lot of times these people go to a weekend seminar or they get a packet for how to rate and grade. And they walk through a couple with you to look at them and then they, you go on and you look through all these applications. It doesn't make you skilled. It makes you skilled at assessment. It doesn't make you skilled at actioning. Hear me. The equivalent is a critic. I myself am a foodie. I love the foods. I can tell you that good, that not good. But I can't tell you how to go from not good to good in food. And that is the way being on admissions committee works, is that they can tell you, oh, this is an acceptable profile or this is not. But where they'll struggle is telling you what you need to do to make up that difference, and then not just what, but how you can actually close that gap. There's a difference there. Does everybody understand what I'm saying right here? It's a very subtle point. But if you understand assessment, that's different from understanding action and how to get there. Those are two entirely different things. And being on the missions committee doesn't make you a person of action and actioning to other people. The last thing I'll say, and then we'll get to questions, is that when you guys are evaluating people's social media profiles, do not ever listen to someone who won't put their name behind what they say. So anyone's profile that has a disclaimer that says, hey, this is not real advice, they don't get your, they don't get to, to advise you. If they can't put their real name and where they're appointed or whether, that's not someone you follow. I see people out here who sign up for programs, crazy, not even like following social media, they sign up for programs on websites where you don't know who runs the website. You don't know who's advising, but it's a cool looking website, so we sign up. You follow people's profiles, again, and you don't know who the heck runs the profile. If someone can't stand behind what they say, you don't want to be listening. Because if they can't stand on their own words, why would you stand on their own words? That's crazy. If someone doesn't believe in their own words enough to say, this is me, I said it, I meant it, it is advice, take it and run with it, why the flippers would you follow them? They don't believe in what they're saying. They know they can't get you where you want to go. And as an extension of that, I said one more thing, but I just remembered one more thing I want to say to you guys. It's longevity in the game. A lot of people pop up and everybody, again, it's all fun games until it gets real. If you guys may or may not recall, <laughs> I call out frauds all the time, left and right. People pop up and oh, I can get famous real quick. I can make a quick buck on these students if I do this and they go in a minute. Longevity is a test of validity. I called out Dr. Buck. I called him Dr. Schmuck. I said, doctor, don't give up, right? It all rhymes. When Dr. Buck was blowing up on social media. And I said, Dr. Buck, he's a schmuck. Don't get with that guy. And it was, oh, blah, 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 blah. 
Fast forward six months, where's Dr. Buck and all of his study expertise and his pre-med advising expertise? Gone. Because he had a cash grab and everybody realized he didn't have nothing and he's gone. And now he's doing lifestyle, whatever, like everybody does. Look at people. Look at their track record. What they're putting out. How long they're putting it out. What they're actually saying. Do they have original content? It matters to look through the BS, guys. Are we good? I got more, but I got another page. But we'll, we'll stop there. I'll teach you guys how to network another day. I'll teach you guys how to network today, too, on the internet. But we'll do that another day. We got time. I'm going to be here every Tuesday. If you guys enjoyed that lecture, let me know you guys enjoyed that lecture. Let me know. Let me know. Comment right now. Let me know you enjoyed this lecture. And you ready for some questions? Who ready for some questions? Brent says he's doing crypto mining now. Sounds about right. Again, all I can do is point the finger. It's up to y'all if you guys listen. I told you, Dr. Buck is a smuck. And people thought, that, oh, he's just a hater. I ain't a hater. I calls it what I sees it. Because you know why? Because I'm actually someone who genuinely cares. This is my Tuesday evening. My kids are at home, right? My my one of my kids is not feeling well. I can be handling my kids right now. I'm here with y'all. This is after I just did two hours with my internal students during my courses. Because I have a passion for helping students. Helping students is something that I, I love to do, that I'm meant to do, that I'm committed to, that I'm invested. I'm not invested in social media and followers and bulls. I'm invested in your success. I told my students on, on we're in coaching tonight. I'm like, I have no problem being the bearer of bad news and telling you what people are scared to tell you because I don't need your love. I don't need your affection. What I need is your success. I need you to succeed in the worst way. That's what I long for is for your success. Not for your admiration, not for your adoration, not for, I long for your success. Yes, yes. All right. Let's get you guys questions. What do you guys want to talk about? I'm not, I'm not crypto mining. You won't catch me crypto mining next year. I see a lot of people also, they, they pivot, right? They do, oh yeah, I'm pre-med advising. I'm also uh, study skills. And then on my third arm, I do uh, financial planning and advising. I'm like, what? How do we get, that's a big stretch. I don't know. You are, you are a master of many crafts, sir. A master of many crafts. Yes, real recognize real and real recognize fake real quick. <laughs> Two million in three months. Uh, Brent, that, that's perfectly reasonable, right? You can make, come on, you guys. Like, come on, get rich, get, get rich quick. That's the original OG. Come on. Okay, all right, what do we talk about? What, is, what kind of questions do you guys have? I got, I, got a, I got some more time for you guys. We're gonna be live action every single Tuesday. Every single Tuesday, we're cutting through the fake. Everybody can curate content. Can you go live action? Can you be amongst the people? Amongst the people! I miss the interaction too. I get lonely feeling by myself, so I figured we should be here together. All right, Spencer says, my question, and also the way we're gonna do this, guys, we're gonna keep it very democratic, right? I say, I give to you what you give to me. So every single week I'm gonna be live action, but you're gonna notice every week I'm ignoring certain people's questions. Why? Because I wanna reward students who show up, show up actively and have something to say. Those students with their questions answered. The rest of you guys can go hang out with Dr. Buck and do crypto mining. Did I say that out loud? I did. Spencer says, my question, let me pull this up. It says, okay, my question. Let me put this over here. See it nice. Okay. Okay, my question. I'm six weeks before my MCAT. I got my letter of uh, letter writers squared away. Anything else I need to do uh, to be tracking for June? So, one of the big things that I teach my students is something to live by for all of you guys to recognize this, to realize this. Very important takeaway. Multitasking is for losers. If you want a surefire way to spin your wheels, be more stressed out, not execute up to your abilities, and set yourself up for disappointment, be a multitasker. I tell all my students, there are not priorities, there is one singular priority. And we must keep our eyes on the prize priority if we are going to be successful in our lives. We just said, Getting to medical school is a long road, a hard road, a difficult road. The best way to do that, right? If, if a road is dangerous, if you're driving the car 
And you know, man, it's it's been harsh weather lately, right? The rain is coming down. There's snow in L.A. We don't know how to drive in that stuff. We're, we're L.A. people. We're by the beach, right? There's snow coming down. If there's harsh weather out and you're on the road, do you drive faster or slower? Do you talk on the phone, paint your nails, talk to your friend? Or do you say, hey, listen, everyone be quiet. The rain is coming down. I can't see nothing. I'm gripping the steering wheel. I'm looking, right? That's what we do, right? We don't multitask when stuff is hairy. We focus in. That's what you guys need to do for your journey. If you are a student who is preparing for the MCAT, what else should you be doing? Nothing. Just preparing for the MCAT. You must be preparing for the MCAT because the more you give to the MCAT, Right? I say the two components to get a great MCAT score is quality of time, quantity of time. Well, if you are doing other things outside of MCAT preparation, you are reducing the quality of your time by reducing the amount of energy and focus and so forth you have for the MCAT, and you're reducing the quantity of time because now you're diverting minutes that you could be doing the MCAT, or you could be resting and recovering and sleeping to get more MCAT prep in, you're doing other things that are wearing you down. So if you're preparing for the MCAT, focus in and take on the MCAT. With that being said, I know, Spencer, this is important nuance here. Right now, currently, where we're at, it's February. MCAT's six weeks out. He wants to be ready for applying. He's trying to figure out, wait, okay, MCAT's coming up, but so was the application cycle. What should I be doing to get prepared for the application cycle? And my response is, you should definitely get letters of recommendation. Why? Because those take months. People are busy. So if you wait until June to ask for letter of recommendation, you're gonna set yourself up for disappointment. So yes, go ask for letter of recommendation right now. When you ask for letter of recommendation, put together what I call a letter of recommendation packet. There are things and items and stuff you wanna hand them so that way they can give you an optimal letter back. You wanna facilitate their process. Too long to go into here, but if you guys wanna learn my letter of recommendation process and my application process, I have an amazing application course couple hundred bucks, get in it, It'll, it's game changer. It'll walk you step by step through the entire application process. But one of the things we talk about is letter recommendations have to be done early, so that way you give them plenty of leeway to give you the best lead time, excuse me, to give you the best letter of recommendation possible. But outside of that, the rest of the application can be done fairly quickly, particularly when you know what you're doing, right? You have the steps laid out for you, you can knock out your entire application in a few weeks. It doesn't take that long, as long as we focus on each component. So what I want you to do is, Yes, take some time, put together a packet for your letter of recognition writers. Take a couple days and get it done, right? Now you still have five and a half weeks. Focus on the MCAT exclusively for those five and a half weeks. Now we're into the uh, beginning of April. So we got April and May to get our application. So that's two months. Then week by week, knock down the dominoes of your application. Personal statement first. Whew, man, got that off my plate. Okay, now activities. Okay, whew, knock those off my plate. Okay, next up is uh, any special statements, disadvantage statement, uh, special concern statement, figure those out. Okay, boom, now I got all my application done. Okay, what's next? Okay, now I'm gonna make sure I pivot over to secondaries and get those done, blah, blah, blah. So you knock down the dominoes as you go step by step. A surefire way to submit a subpar application, an unfocused application, a mind scrambling application is to be doing multiple parts of the application at one time. It's like with anything. Uh, a little bit of personal statement, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. This thing starts to muddle together and it's a wreck. Knock down the application step by step by step. And the very first part of being ready to submit that application is letter of recommendations and then also getting this MCAT right. So focus in. We do not multitask. Does everybody agree with me? We do not multitask. Who loves to multitask and be less than you could be? <laughs> who's, who's actively opting in to being less than their full potential by being a multitasker? If you think... And this is the rebuttal I give when I go out and talk to, to student groups, right? Student groups, whatever. I'm always like, and <laughs> I'm always like, you gotta stop multitasking. And they're like, well, I'm a great multitasker. I do best when I have multiple things on my plate. And like Spencer said, multitasking is for fools, y'all. Because even though we think that, the literature, the research, the concrete data shows we are not good multitaskers. And when we multitask, we dilute our true power. Imagine, you are Superman. You are the Superman of pre-meds, y'all. You got a cape and everything, an S on your chest, SP, super pre-med. But you are actively, by multitasking, feeding yourself kryptonite by the handful. Dang, you could have been Superman. 
but you couldn't give up that kryptonite. The kryptonite is like the new crack. Kryptonite. Think about that. That's what you're doing when you're multitasking. You're, you're freebasing kryptonite. Bam! That was a metaphor on a metaphor on a metaphor on a metaphor on an analogy. Bam! You are freebasing kryptonite. If you don't know that reference, put it all together. Your homework time is go watch New Jack City. New Jack City just got released on, it's either, it's either on Prime or on Netflix. New Jack City is here, it's probably for Black History Month. Dang, that's, that, I think it's for Black History Month. But New Jack City is an old school, late 80s, Wesley Snipes, Chris Rock, Ice-T movie about the crack epidemic in New York. And, oh man, Nino Brown, bad, bad Nino Brown. But that's your homework tonight to understand what that freebasing, the kryptonite reference is. <laughs> I, I like that. Hannah said, I thought I was unbeatable until I needed to, as Kendrick says, sit down and be humble. Sit down. Be humble. And that's the beautiful thing. I, I was like, well, can we sidetrack here for a second? Can I sidetrack? Can I get off topic on topic? Because Hannah just inspired me in the box right here. It's amazing to me how many people live their lives because it's coming full circle. We were talking about social media earlier. It's amazing to me how many people think that pictures and videos and curated segments of people's lives are their real life. And what's unfortunate is this is what's crazy. Hear me out here. In this social media era, we have real life people who think that we can't see through their facade. And they think that a beautiful Instagram profile is their life. <gasps> Look at this Beamer I'm driving. All the while I got 15 roommates, right? They confuse the fact that Instagram matters more than personal lives. And the way this translates and the, the equivalent, stay with me. So many students have that same mindset towards their journeys. And so you have students out here who look like they're doing something academically. They want to look like they know everything more than they actually care about knowing everything. They think it's more important to look good than it is to actually be good. You guys everybody know what I'm saying right now? This is super important. If you are a student and you think that that false bravado and acting like you was an A student, acting like you know everything, means something, you're slipping. You're slipping. I was talking to a student earlier this week. I was talking about, I don't care how it looks. I care about the result. Judge me if you want to. I'll stumble and fumble and mumble right to my A. You can laugh at how hard I'm working. You can laugh at how I'm going to office hours. You can laugh at me for asking a question in class. But when I get that A, who's laughing? <laughs> All those people <laughs> dries up quick like. Quick like. And it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I love to see the look, the sour puss look on people's face that hated on me, that didn't appreciate what I had to do for me. And so I say all this to say, right, to Hannah's point about sit down and be humble. Be humble enough to learn from people. Be prideful enough, proud enough of yourself, secure enough in yourself to admit when you don't know everything and to ask for the assistance you need. Because I would rather people judge me and think I'm stupid while I'm getting smart. Because I can look stupid and be getting smart. It's kind of paradoxical. It may look stupid to you that I'm asking a question, but I'm getting smart and I'm gonna outclass you in this exam. And so I encourage all of you guys, don't be too prideful to learn. Don't be too prideful, don't be too um, prideful to, 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 to be worried and be ashamed of people judging you. Ask the questions you need to get there. Because people get humble quick. I just said I gave medical talks. There's MS1s, MS2s, med students. You'd be shocked if you were in medical school. They're studying actively to be doctors and they don't know how to study. And when I call them out on it, they want to challenge me. And if you guys have been in a room with me, who here has ever been to one of my events and see me speak? I don't let people leave my room with false beliefs and false hopes. I was saying earlier that I'm a dark cloud. Darkness is spreading when I'm in the building because I'll check you real quick. I'll humble you real quick. I'm, I'm Kendrick, sit down, be humble. And I show you why you need to be humble. I will call you out. And last week I had these medical students, I had to, there was a girl sitting in the fourth row. In the fourth row. And I said, you are going to be my problem child tonight. You're very proud of what you do. And you think you know a lot. We're going to get to it. And I had to break her and twist her all the way down to build her back up to show her, hey, you think your game is tight, but your game is weak. You're leaking. 
Let me help you out. Let me let me shape you in the right way and get stuff going for you. And so you guys have to recognize that that at some day you're going to reach a level where you are challenged beyond what you got going on if you don't put yourself out there to grow and to get better. If you don't do that, man, you will, at some point you're going to hit a you're going to hit a you're going to hit a wall. And this is the beauty of my life and. Antonio back in the building. Now it says student doctor Antonio. Look at you fancy. Look at you fancy. The beauty of this, guys, is if you are not prideful, if you say, listen, I want to learn everything, and you want to look for ways to get better, and you say, you say to yourself, yeah, I want to be the best, but I know I can always get better. That's what I said to myself. What you will find is that if you're constantly looking for ways to get better, and you never are full of information, you will find yourself in a situation where there is no hurdle you can't overcome. As someone who comes from a disadvantaged background, who academically was not prepared to qualify, to someone who's rocking, dominated UCI, dominated uh, grad school, dominated Stanford Medical School, dominated residency, and now I dominate as a doctor? How did I get here? By being humble and saying, no, I want to know, hey, you got something to teach me. You may not know more than me as a whole, but you got one thing you can teach me. I want to sharpen that blade because then if I got all these tools, I'm unstoppable. What you need, switchblade, anything you need, I'm serving up. We ready. You can't, ha, oh, ha, ha, there is no shock and surprise and there's no nothing you can throw at me that I'm not ready for. I'm ready for it all because I was humble enough. I was secure enough in myself at the same time to say, no, I need help. I want help. I want what you know I want me to know. <laughs> That's how I want to be. All right. I'm sorry, I tangent, I tangent, I tangentized right there a little bit because Hannah got me fired up. It's almost some Kendrick, be humble. But that's the truth and that's the reality is that we got to be in that position where we are, we are humble and we are open to learning new things. Okay, let me, let me scroll back up. I appreciate all the questions in the box, y'all. If you guys are live, watch with me. If y'all having some fun, let me know right now, right now. Yes, you did find your clan, Hannah. Overachievers in the building. All right, Parth says, is it worth it uh, pursuing a career as a physician if you ultimately want to be a biotech investor or management? I'll answer this question with a real world example. I have a student right now who wants to be a doctor and a lawyer, and I'm trying to convince him not to do that. And Parth, the answer to your question lies in this. He says that he wants to know the medicine but he wants to drive policy as a lawyer. And what I tried to explain to him is, is, hey, all you're doing is gonna be accumulating all this knowledge, but you're gonna be skilled in medicine and skilled in, in law, but you're not gonna be super skilled in either one. You're better off doing one thing and then contracting out the other part. So be a super high level clinician, passionate about policy and partner with a lawyer to get the job done or go to law school, get the policy knowledge, and then consult out with doctors about what issues need to be tackled. But don't do both. So Parth, if you're saying you wanna be a biotech investor or manager, that's on the money side. So why would you spend years away from money as a poor medical student, poor resident, thinking only about the clinical side and not about the larger landscape of where the industry is, is, is going? You gotta work in industry to know the industry. So if you wanna be able to invest, right, what do investors do? They see the big bang before the big bang happens. They're trend forecasters. Well, how can you trend forecast if you're in medical school? So if you are saying you want to be an investor or you want to be in management, med school ain't the path for you. You need to go get business experience. You need to go be giving your time, volunteering your time for some of these big investment companies, startup companies, learning the business so that way you have an expertise to bring in to that business side. Does that answer your question? I hope it does. Thank you for your question. Appreciate it. Uh, Brandon says, how can I talk to you face to face? What package programs do I need to buy? If you want to talk to me face to face, I have coaching every single freaking week in my total pre med transformation program. Get you all my classes and it gets you to meet with me every single week. And the price on that is actually going to go up in within one week. The price on my TPT is going to double because now the TPT is fully launching. It's going to double in price. But every single week, like just right before this, I met for two hours face-to-face -face on Zoom. You can ask me any questions. We joke around, blah, blah. I see Spencer on here. I see Rosanna. I see some of my students on here who I know very well because they talk to me every week. They relate with me, right? We talk, we correspond, all these kind of things. So if you want to get at me, the way you get at me is you get in my programs. 
So my study program, the five pillars of study, let's get different grades, we meet once a month. Today was study coaching, right? My MCAT program, we meet once a month. My TPT, we meet every single week. So you can ask me any questions you can have. You can cry on my shoulder. You can get some of this tough love that I bring to you and we can strategize for your future. So if you want to get with me guys, the way to get to my website, get to my programs. There's links in the description below for you guys to get those programs at what? Discounts. Yay. So take advantage of that. Yeah, 23 knows all answered it. So yeah, look. look said, hey, check the link in the video description. It's right there. Get that. Get that. Get good stuff. Okay. Maya says, if I messed up my fresh, are we still all good? Can I keep answering questions? Or do you guys want to leave? Have I gone, have I gone too far? Am I, am, I, am I going too long? That, that's the question I have to ask. Because, again, <clears throat> I'm a real expert. We can do long form. I love this stuff. We can do long form. But for some people, you know I mean? Your attention spans is TikTok level. And this ain't TikTok level. This is, we going up a notch, y'all. We, we, we going big. We, 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 we's uh, going big right now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let these 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 characters see that we're still over here. We are still live action, y'all. Still live action, answering questions right now. What are we like? We're 56 minutes in, still going strong. If you want to get better today, you need to be with us. We are live action on YouTube. Search the name, Doctor Pineset. We here. We active. We getting at it. We having a good time. So join us on the channel. Get your questions answered. I'm gonna answer Maya's question right now. Maya says, if I messed up my freshman year and second semester of sophomore year, two C's, and my transcript doesn't look too great so far. Does that limit my competitiveness? An online mentor said yes in the tri -DO. So I love this, right? You have a student here who messed up freshman year and had some slippage sophomore year, and the immediate answer from this expert mentor online is to take yourself to a DO school to give up on NB schools, to basically just give up on your future. You can't get better. You are what you are. Those grades are forever and you can't overcome it. Why? Because that person is an assessor, right? And this person is an assessor from afar looking at it and isn't on the ground level working with students. I work with students. I be with students. I know the students. So I'm able to actually tell you that no, it's not over. No, you aren't DO limited. No, you aren't out of the med school running. Come on, guys. Is that outrageous? How do like, I wouldn't be able to sleep myself at night if I was on the internet on a forum. Oh, I'm a, I'm a certified badge member here on this SDN forum. Listen to me. And I'm telling students, if you had a bad freshman year and a bad sophomore year, you can't get into medical school. Maya, what if I told you this? What if I told you I myself had a disastrous freshman year that was so bad, in fact, that my college counselor told me you will never get into medical school and actually, frankly, I don't think you're gonna graduate in the sciences, change over to humanities. Yet I managed to get myself in order. I learned how to study, which is what you need to do right now, my, you need to get in my five pillars course and learn how to study so you can be the better student, the A student to be consistent and get the grades. That's the very first thing to get into medical school is to learn how to study. I did that. Then I educated myself, became an expert in the medical school admissions process and how to execute in action a pre-med plan. And I took that terrible freshman year. You'll never get to medical school. And I got into Stanford Medical School, the medical school. Fear the tree, y'all. And I got to go back to that same counselor and say, hey, listen, you told me I'd never get in. I got in. And Maya, what I want for you right now, is I want you to, be able to go to that internet online mentor badge supreme person, you know, I'm on a committee person. And I want you to tell them, hey, listen, I didn't listen to you. I listened to Dr. Pineset. And Dr. Pineset told me, listen, doesn't matter how bad my grades are. If I'm willing to put the time in to better myself and become the A student, and I'm willing to take the classes and spend the time and dedicate myself and improve my grades from here on out and get all A's, this is the important thing, Maya, all A's, because B's don't help us, doesn't bring the GPA up to competitive range, all A's, if I'm willing to put the time in, Maya, if you're willing to do that, to better yourself, learn how to study, to improve the grades, get the A's, and then you're willing to take the time also to succeed outside the classroom, you can get into an MD school. You can get into a D school if you want to, but your options are open. Your, your career's not over. And this is a big problem, with, right? We started this talking about social media. There's people out here. And this is, can I say something? Can, I, can, can, we, can we talk about life for a second? 
in this world, guys, we live in a dark, dark world, right? So we'll escape to, to the social media. We live in such a dark, such a hard, harsh world. And because of that, there's so much failure about. A lot of failure, a lot of difficulty, a lot of struggle. And so because of that, you have a lot of people in this world who have failed, who have not lived up to their dream. They, they fell short of their dream. And so because they fell short, and because they didn't achieve their dream, and because they didn't get to there, they don't have a vision of what that is. And so they're allowing their darkness to roll over your vision of your life. They can't see the hope. And so they tell you, nah, just quit. Don't even work on it. There's nothing to be done. No, 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 no. Maya, you got a long, it's a long, we just said it's a long road to med school. You got plenty of road to make this up, but you can't afford to keep stepping in potholes. You gotta change it up. Get that car tuned up, ready to go, and rock get them off-road tires on there. Get your study skills like off-road tires Roll right through it and get right to medical school. Okay. Okay, we're right in an hour, so we might have to cut this off. Uh, Parf asked a question. A lot of your classmates go into consulting at the big firms. Uh, yeah, McKesson, Deloitte, right? Those are the big firms. So the question is, is going to medical school, going to consulting? Most of the people, I won't say everyone, most of the people who I know who work in consulting, who work on the business side of healthcare, the ones who realized it before they finished medical school, whether it was before they even went to medical school or they realized in medical school, because I know both sides of it. I worked in consulting before I went to medical school, right? So I've been on that side of it. If you recognize you want to go into consulting, you want to go into the business side, don't waste time, get into the industry. Because in that industry, they reward not degrees, they reward knowledge. And so if you can be in industry, Learning that industry, building up experience, knowledge, real world skills, uh, a, um, a bank of accomplishments, of achievements that mean something, you will allow yourself to elevate faster and farther than you would wasting time in medical school and residency. So for me, the people that I know who are big dogs in consulting either didn't go to medical school because they recognized, oh, I'm going to get off on this path, even though I was going to do that. Or while they were in medical school, they left. And so Stanford, I said Stanford's the greatest medical school in the, in the world. Why? Because they open up your eyes to what is truly possible if you dedicate yourself to your craft. You're surrounded by greatness of people who simply said, I'm going to focus in and I'm going to maximize my impact on this world. And so when you're in that climate, you start to see the people who succeed are the people who focused in. And so at Stanford, there's a lot of people who recognize, oh, wait, I can make a bigger impact without medical school. And so they decide to focus in, they leave medical school. So I know I have a lot of classmates who left, never finished, because they found a pathway where they can make the impact. So that is what you guys as students, I encourage you guys to do even as a pre-med, look at your lives, look at your curriculum and say, wait a minute, what am I doing that I'm not making a difference at? What am I doing where I'm just there? What can I be doing right now to make an impact, to change this world, to build myself up or to build somebody else up? If you're involved in something you're not building yourself or building someone else, Drop it right now because it's a waste of everybody's time. Yes? Okay. All right. Oh, I like this comment from Antonio. I like this. Can I add this? To the, I don't know how to do this. It says, I got into the TST program, which is my study program, at 50, 47 years old. I have been out of school for 10 years with a 2.8 GPA. Long story short, I'm in med school now at 49 years old. Dr. P is the truth. I love that. Thank you, Antonio, right? So again, and I recognize Antonio, so he popped up on the box because I know my students. I care about my students. I'm committed to their success. And so I want all of you guys to find someone who's committed not to telling you what you can't do, not to telling you how bad you are. I want you to go to someone like me who will tell you, yes, you are bad. Yes, you have screwed up, but here is how you fix it. That's what you want from this world, but from this earth, from social media, from all this stuff, to bring everything full circle. I want you to succeed and do that yet to people around you who can see you can be successful and who can show you the way to get to that success, guys. Was this a great Tuesday? Is everybody having a great time? Are you glad? Was this a valuable use? One hour, four minutes, 27 seconds. Is this a valuable use of your Tuesday evening? How great would it be if every Tuesday you'd come hang out with me, ask questions, get encouragement, get advice, and move forward in your journey? Well, you can. Every single Tuesday, I'm going to be here. Every single Tuesday, I'm here. We're live action. 
We're live action. I coach every Tuesday in my internal groups, and then we'll get on here after, and we'll go live action. Because I care about your guys' success. I care about your greatness. I care about you getting to your future. So let's go. If you're ready to make the jump, right? This is cool. It's awesome. It's a powerful hour. My internal coaching, way more better. It's wild. It's real. It's nuts and bolts. We execute. So if you're ready to make that jump, guys, get to my website. Get into my programs. Like I said, discount links in the box below. Let's go, guys. Let's get to you to your greatness. I'll see all of you guys next week. Next Tuesday, 6 p.m., same time, same live action. If you guys have questions, if you're watching this after the fact on the replay, if you're listening to this on the podcast, take a second, send me a comment, send me a DM, send me an email, comment in the box, questions you have, and I'll make sure I try to address them on either a social media tidbit on, or I'll address them on another YouTube video or I'll add them to next week or whatever to make sure that every single week I'm bringing you guys, we're going to be going live action at least an hour every single Tuesday, bringing you guys good stuff. So I'll see you guys next time. That's it for another episode of the Study Doc Show. Show your love by smashing the like button and commenting in the box below. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses, no more complaining. You're going to take your future into your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better? Get to my website, thestudydoc.com. Grab a free ebook, sign up for a free webinar, and if you're really ready to transform, enroll in one of my life-changing courses or coaching programs.